Okay, we're going back to writer's workshop. So, writers, I have a story to tell you. In my family, we like to tell a favorite story. It's a story about the best Thanksgiving ever that we had. It was a great Thanksgiving. We had so much fun. And anytime we're on a road trip, anytime we're all gathered together or anything, you know what we do? The first thing we do, we tell this story. And each time we tell the story, it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit more jazzed up and a little bit crazier. Because every time we tell the story, something new is remembered. Or we think of something and we say, oh, that sounds a lot of, like a lot of fun to tell this story with. So my friends, we think about it and then we write, we re re revise it. So when writers think, this is a great story that I've written, they don't just say, well, that's it, we're done with that. No, they go back. They add more to it. So today I want to teach you and actually just remind you, because we already know that, that writers revise stories just like you revise STEM Friday projects if it doesn't work. Or like that one STEM Friday where we made the cup towers. Some friends got theirs to work on the first try, but they said, I can make it even better. And they went back and they made it bigger and better. So just like that, when a writer likes his or her story, the writer returns to it thinking, how can I make this even better? One way to revise is they picture what happened in their mind, and then they put that picture on the page. <clears throat> so when I revise, the first step, step one, is to find a story that I like and is worth making really super special. Okay, so this is my story that I'm going to revise. Let's see, right here. So I'm going to revise my story about the time my sister scared a cow. <laughs> my goodness. So I'll read you the story real quick, and then we'll go back and add more. The time my sister scared a cow. One time, my sister went to my cousin's farm. She wanted to take a picture with her favorite animal. But when she jumped in the air for the picture... And the cow got scared. My sister was sad. She didn't get her picture. So as I was rereading that story, I was thinking to myself, okay, if this is going to be in the library, if this is going to be the best story ever, everybody in the whole wide world is going to read it, then I can make it even better. I know I can. So imagine you find this book in the library. You go up and you say, oh, Miss Morgan wrote that book. That's a story about the time her sister scared a cow. I'm going to read it. So you pick it up. And now we're going to have to think to ourselves, how can I make it even better? Well, listen to me think about it. Okay, the first page. The time my sister scared a cow. One time my sister went to my cousin's farm. Let's see, what kind of farm was it? That's probably pretty important. There weren't very many chickens or roosters or pigs, but there were a lot of cows. And they were they pretty much just roamed around everywhere, which made the whole place smell pretty bad like cows. I think I'm gonna add that detail. So on this first page, I wrote, the time my sister scared a cow. One time my sister went to my cousin's farm. Pee it smelled like cow everywhere. And then I'm going to add to my picture, here's my speech bubble, it says, it smells like cow. My goodness. Do you see how I made that page a little bit more interesting? It went from my sister visited a farm to my sister visited a farm that smelled so bad, just like cow the whole place, because there were cows everywhere. Can you picture it in your brain? Try to think about it. Okay, here we go. This is what I added to this page. She wanted to take a picture with her favorite animal. Well, that doesn't tell me what the animal is, so I think I'll keep going. So she found a cute cow grazing in the pasture. Here's my cow, but wait a second, what do cows say? They say, moo. So do you see, at first it just said she wanted to take a picture with her favorite animal. 
But now we know what's her favorite animal. It's a cow. So my friends, I didn't say her favorite animal is a cow, but you just knew that because I added more details to create that wonderful mind movie. Go on to the next page. But when she jumped in the air for the picture, the cow got scared. The cow jumped 10 feet in the air and screamed so loud. So before you can see kind of in my picture, you see the cow is just standing, but now I made it so he's jumping and he's saying, moo, ah, moo. There's my sister jumping. So my friends, it wasn't just the cow got scared. He didn't just go, oh, that's scary, and move away. No way. He actually jumped up too because he didn't know what was happening. So I needed to add that to my words and my pictures. And look at that I did. Can you just imagine this whole story coming together? Oh my goodness. Last page. My sister was sad. She didn't get her picture. The cow doesn't like cameras and runs away every time he sees one. So do you see, friends, it wasn't just my sister was sad, but what about the cow? We care about the cow, too. And now we know that poor little cow doesn't like pictures. So the moral of this story, friends, is don't jump in front of cows. It scares them. But do you see, my friends, how I thought to myself, hmm, how can I add more detail so that we're not just finding out well, my sister wanted a picture with her favorite animal. But now we know through my details, her favorite animal is a cow. And the cow didn't just gasp and walk away. He jumped and screamed and what an exciting story that is. So when you guys are writing your stories today, I want you to be thinking like that. And I know Ms. Morgan knows that you don't have your writing folders and that's okay. But you wrote a story yesterday, so you can go back and edit that one. You can finish that one. Or if you're ready, you can move on to a new story. But remember that good writers, do they just say, oh, that's good enough. No way, Jose. How, are you, how am I ever going to find your stories in the library or at Barnes & Noble if you just give up? No way. Go back to those stories and check. So, um... We know a lot of different ways. So when you want to picture a story and to put that picture on the page, you need to go back in your mind and picture it in your brain. Then right away, add it to your picture and add the words after. Remember, that's how we write. We think to ourselves about the story. Maybe you say it out loud. Maybe you act it out. Maybe you touch the pages and say the words that you're going to write. But you think out the story. Then you draw the pictures, all the pictures, pictures and label. Then you go back and you add the words. And remember, our pictures need to be detailed. Just like in Reader's Workshop, when we were looking at um, green eggs and ham, and we had to look at all the pictures because there were so many good things in the picture. Well, same thing with your writing. There needs to be so many good things in your writing that makes it just fantastic. So you want to look at all the parts of your story in your brain. So you might have to close your eyes and make a mind movie of what happened, your true story. And then look all around in your brain and think about all the different things that were there that can make your writing spectacular. So my friends, today we learned that writers make stories they like even better. One way to do this is to picture a story and then put that picture into your words and your pictures. You can picture the story in your minds and add the words for what we see in our minds or we can look in the picture we drew looking for parts we remembered to draw but forgot to write. So today we'll begin this next part of our unit by doing what real writers do. You'll have a chance to go to the finished side of your of your pile. So um, the one that you finished yesterday, or you may begin a new one, and reread it. 
So once you finish this new one that you're starting, if you choose to start a new one, go back, reread it, see if you can add more. And as you do that, I want you to think about how you can revise your story. Use the picture in your mind and the pictures on your page to help you add words that will make your story even more amazing. If you have an idea for how to revise your writing, you can go ahead and start right now. If you're not so sure, let me give you a tip. You can ask a friend, and I know that there might not be another kindergartner in your, in your home, but guess what? You have mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, brother, sister. You can have anyone who's there with you help you. You can read them your story and say, is there anything I could add to make this story even better, more detailed? And they might give you some help. So if you're not sure how you are going to add to it, ask someone. Because you know what? I bet that they would be more and more willing to help you. So friends, make sure that when you are all done with your writing for today and you've gone back and you've added to it, I want you to be able to read it to someone. Read it to mom and dad or brother and sister or grandma and grandpa, whoever you're with. Read it to them because remember we are writers for readers. We write so that other people can read our exciting, amazing, incredible stories that I know you are writing. So friends, now it is time for you to go try. So I want you to go and write and think about how can I make this an even better story by looking at my pictures and adding words to make my pictures match my words. Okay friends, go ahead, get started.